they're making a genuine difference to the environment in third world countries. This is Rithington Comprehensive School in Radstock near Bath. You could walk the playgrounds and the fields all day long and find nothing particularly unusual. But head for the rickety old greenhouse tucked away behind the canteen and you'll find something going on there which is quite extraordinary. Members of the school's greenhouse club are quickly becoming some of Britain's foremost orchid experts. Their knowledge of orchids and everything to do with orchids is simply astounding. I look after the prospecias, which are usually um, non-recipient, meaning that their flowers are upside down. These should be the other way around. Right. Now, how do you pollinate these? Well, uh, basically, that little orange bit you can see there is yeah. the pollen. And so basically, you just have to put it to the stigmatic surface just behind it. Now that's more familiar, really, isn't it? That's, that's what, what people would recognise. Yeah, orchid. it's a typical hybrid of an orchid. It's got a very big, blousy lip, um, very jagged um, petals, so you usually find that from odontoglossums, and you get the sort of markings on it, which come from oncidiums, and the colour's just a mix between all of them. It took me, a, well, three years before I got really sort of keen, sort of confident around them. So now I can be talking to the world experts on orchids and they wouldn't know that I'm sort of only just 14. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we get a seed put on it. The inspiration for Callum and all his fellow students has been Simon Pugh-Jones. Okay. I arrived as head of physics and that was probably 14 years ago. Right. Uh, and soon afterwards the, the school greenhouses became empty because of rural science really went from the school curriculum when the national curriculum came in. So I jumped in. You had uh, them for your orchids? Well, no, it wasn't orchids <laughs> to begin with. I mean, to start with, it was bedding plants, hanging baskets, whatever we could do to, to raise a bit of money. Um, and steadily the orchids crept in. Uh, and they've now reached the point where you're pushed to find anything that isn't an orchid. I've got three children. I know how hard it is to get them interested in gardening of any kind. Now, how on earth have you managed to get them not just into gardening, but into very specialised gardening? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> I think the secret is really giving them responsibility for it. So what happens is every student is responsible for one genus or a group of plants. And they, they really are theirs. Um, so they do everything for them. They're the ones who repot them and they, and they get them ready for the shows and win the rosettes. For the last three years we've had six form students from here that have reached the finals of the Young Scientist of the Year. And we've had uh, one, one group that have, that have won it. I mean what's coming out of this is our six formers get to do research that most students wouldn't do until they were postgraduates. It's spectacular, isn't it? How long have you been studying orchids? Um, this is coming to the end of my third year now. I've been growing them since year seven. And do you think you'll continue doing this? Oh, almost definitely. I intend to do a PhD in orchidology when I leave school. But it's only a new science, so there's not very many universities doing it at the moment. That's pretty precise for someone who's just 14. Mm. <laughs> In their natural habitats of Southeast Asia and South America, exotic orchids are coming under ever-increasing threat. But now, using this specialized micropropagation lab, which is built in an old girl's toilet block, Simon and his students are using their expertise to initiate orchid conservation on a genuinely global scale. Perfect, yep, fantastic. Our most exciting project is with Sikkim in northern India, where plants like like this one, this is uh, Cymbidium insigni, um, are under real threat um, from collection. If you're a gardener in that part of the world and you, yeah. and you want one of these flowers, you've really got no choice other than have a well-collected plant because there's nobody growing them from seed. Right. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's, it's been going on for a long time, but it, it's, it's now unsustainable. Now, to grow them from seed, you do need you know, the lab facilities. Uh, and what's happening is seed is being sent to us that we're growing by the thousand in our lab and then sending back to village schools in Sikkim. For, for them to grow, so that the schools become the producer instead of the forest. That, that's a stunning concept, beautifully simple. Two schools, one here yeah. and one in Sikkim, are managing to act as conservationists on a global scale. Yeah, I'm, I, I think this, this is going to change the world, I think, because... It's, it's, it really is dramatic, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's tried anything like it before, but if this works, then I think it, it's a real model to follow here. Yeah. Each seed pod that the school receives from India contains more than a million seeds. And the students are now so skilled that they can grow plants from almost every one. Now, presumably, under this system, you can produce 
millions yeah. of pounds. And is that what you're doing? Yes, we're actually going to be producing so many plants that we can be able to spread them all over the world and bring the numbers up. It is one of the most ambitious, extraordinary projects I've ever heard of. Yes. Of course, conservation projects cost money, but they've thought of that as well. The students have started a business selling orchid growing kits, and this will pay for further research and conservation in both India and Costa Rica. Now, from this little setup, you've got three massive projects. You've got research up to postgraduate standard. You've got a conservation project that seems to be stunningly dramatic, and the possibilities are enormous. And you've also got a business going, raising money, the profits of which are going to Costa Rica. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you start with a couple of plants, isn't it? Well, I brought back with me the kit. That's what you get. There's Very good. <laughs> it's hard to believe, though, isn't it? And it is, I tell you what, Amelia, to think that they will grow in that. Lumps of old bark. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm going to do right. that later. Good luck. See you. Bye. Of course, when you buy an orchid, most of them look like this. They come in a cellophane wrap. And it is really, really important to leave that on because just the journey from the garden centre to the car in the cold at the moment is enough to kill it because, of course, they're a tropical plant. So if you're giving it for Mother's Day, leave the wrap on on its journey. There are two main types you can buy in a garden centre. The Cymbidium family...